Yeah. Ricky, did you ever think you'd be sitting by me in front no. of cameras and no. lights to get Never. our boots on? Never. No, not <laughs> last year we were training. I was training and I was FaceTiming you. Or, you were. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm Shelly Slater. We're at the Slate and this is like the coolest of the coolest people ever. This is Ricky Rayleigh, yeah. which you don't even see yourself like that, which mm -hmm. is part of what makes you so cool. <laughs> but we have our boots on. We We're having to get them in the frame here. Right. You're pretty flexible there. Look at us. I know. You're going to hike like, it five, six, yeah. seven, eight, right? <laughs> okay. So these are my boots for the boot oh campaign, because what we want you to do is get your boots off because for goodness sakes, don't you think for goodness sakes, people need to do something. They need to do something. They need to do something for the veterans yes. around them, right? Because yes. you've done enough. So, okay. Where are you going and why? you got a big thing happening on Saturday. Yes, I am leaving here in Dallas, and now I will be going to Fort Pierce, Florida. So it's only 1,200 miles this year. Wait, miles doing what? Riding my hand bike. Riding so, your hand bike, so like this. Yeah, so it's all... For 1,200 miles. 1,200 miles. So I went 20 miles once on my bottom, Yeah. and that was really bad. It yeah. was really painful. You got saddle sore. And I like did. you couldn't I, like yeah, walk like yeah. you just got off a horse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you like walk like this. It's really yucky. Yeah, that's why I don't walk. There you go. <laughs> that's the easiest way. <laughs> Ricky. Okay. So this is the other thing that I love about Ricky so much. You are you love self-deprecation. You like to pick on yourself. You don't yeah. take yourself seriously. And why is that? I, you know, it's just I guess it's easier than having to think about everything so serious in life. Like life is too short to worry about all that mm -hmm. and you just got to keep moving and you have a different perspective you know i think day to day i'm worried about oh i forgot this for my kid and i didn't do this and you know i feel like i'm dropping this ball and that ball but none of that really matters does it no you know and that's something i learned with uh, going through the boot campaigns health and wellness program i actually that's one of the things i gained from it was understanding that we do a lot of mind reading and mm -hmm. we put our thoughts into other people's heads. So we assume we're way more important than we are. Mm -hmm. So we go around thinking that what everyone is thinking about us, we're thinking in our head. And so we limit how we live our lives day to day because mm -hmm. of that. And that allowed me to understand that I just need to live for me and be the happiest I can be. And so by doing that, one way is by giving back to the veterans mm -hmm. and by keeping pushing forward and getting this mission going with the boot campaign, that's one thing that makes me happy and making sure my family's happy. So my wife and son mean the world to me. So by keeping them happy makes me happy. So if I can do those two things, I'm happy. Life is good. That's all I need to do. So for people who are like, who's Ricky Rayleigh? What's his story? Tell me about going overseas and life in the military. So yeah, so I did I did six years in the Indiana Army National Guard and I did one tour in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And so I was blown up. I got a traumatic brain injury from one of the explosions. And uh, that was mild. And then coming home, mm -hmm. it, uh, it allowed me to not really focus on it because they're invisible, they're hidden. People don't see them. They invisible wounds. Invisible yeah. wounds, yeah. yeah. So people don't see them and they don't give them any credit or clout like you don't it's just like hey you're back welcome yeah. home let me Thanks buy you for a beer your service. Yeah. right so but it, it's really hard to transition back. it is it's very hard because when you get home you get home to people to your tribe to who these people are your core people who you are your family you love them they love you and you used to fit right in there mm. and then when you get home because of perspective and the growth you've had from the past year in a combat zone, you're not fitting in that circle anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of start to pull away from them and you feel a little bit isolated. And then that's when the depression sets in and uh, the more the effects of the PTSD and the traumatic brain injuries, you really start to feel yourself pull away mm -hmm. because you don't feel like you belong. And all the guys that you belong with, are going through the same thing, but in their own worlds. In their own silos, not yeah. telling people because their wounds are invisible. Yeah. And so it's, you retreat. Yeah. And no one gives it any credit. Like no one thinks hmm. you should be depressed. Hmm. No one fully understands why it's hard to wake up in the morning and get out of bed mm -hmm. when there's nothing physically wrong with you. Yeah. You told me once that, you know, war was hard. This transition back is actually harder 
Yeah, the transition home, getting, finding your place again back home is probably the hardest thing. So when you get a group like Boot Campaign who wants to come in and say, we want to love on all of you and we're not going to cookie cutter something for you and put you in this program that's step one, step two, step three. You and Bobby and Jane and Sue are all going to do the same program because you're all the same person and they customize something to you. How revolutionary. What, how does that transform your help you get out of bed? it? it uh, it's just because of you don't, I don't know, it's weird because you don't realize how you don't realize these people at the boot campaign, how much they care for you or care for the veterans. And it's weird to have that kind of compassion or attention from people because it's like, they truly care about you, not like the person or the whole group of problem. They care about the whole problem, but they understand they have to fix the individuals mm -hmm. because you can't fix a huge problem like uh, the PTSD and the traumatic brain injuries because you're just not going to tackle that problem by taking it all on. So mm -hmm. they're taking on the individuals and that's allowing now I can take on that and then word of mouth, get it to my friends who are going through the same right. things. And then we actually end up tackling the whole problem. And then you become people who do things like the Rayleigh road trip yeah. to let people know. And then, you know, you're changing one person's life who hopefully changes another person's life. Domino, domino, yeah. right? So then you get the whole problem taken care of and we're, taking on this, taking on it with ourselves, you know, owner, owning what it is and not expecting other people to fix it. So what does that look like then? So you go through boot campaign, some of it's physical, some of it's for brain injuries, some of it's just therapy, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. it's custom to you. How is that helping you get, what is the thing you're, I guess, most proud of? And it could be the smallest thing ever that you want to go play with your kid, you want to actually go on a white, uh, on a date with your wife, like what is it? What's it you like? You know, what I'm probably most proud of is here recently, I uh, was speaking at my son's school to his whole third grade. And uh, so I, I spoke to him about disability awareness and just, we had, I put a bunch of pictures up there of all the fun things we've done as family and all that fun stuff. My son was up there with me in front of his whole grade. and. Uh, then when they were done, his teacher had them all write notes to me. Oh. And then he wrote a note and it was, I was able to appreciate his note, but he, I didn't realize how he looked at me, oh. but it, he told me how awesome I was and how uh, much he looked forward to me doing a Rayleigh road trip too. So it's like, I'm very proud that now I have started something that he looks up to and idolizes and it's, that's probably the greatest thing is being able to embrace those feelings and feel them mm -hmm. because before and I would have, yeah, I would have shut them off and not felt them. So you cried? No, I didn't cry. This oh, time. stop it. You did too. I'm just kidding. That's amazing. And your son is so cute, he, yeah, but you're right. It's interesting what they pick up and what they don't pick up and you have no clue what they're picking up until something like that happens. You, yeah. yeah. You really don't know that. And this with the boot campaigns, program i was able to be there mm. be involved in it not just physically in the room yeah but actually there with him trying to engage with him and have it be real yeah, yeah. and so when i leave on trips or stuff now so i uh, always leaving notes so mm -hmm. i'll writing notes and i'll tag them up random places and stuff and so it's just fun being able to be part of my family that's incredible yeah so when you're on mile 1000 going like this, what, when you're in absolute and utter pain and you probably have blisters on your hands, do you have blisters on your hands? No, they're pretty good. Wow. Actually. Yeah. How in the world do you not? You know, manicures. 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 <laughs> things like this. He's a high maintenance. I'm, I'm very high maintenance. You're very high maintenance. I am. Sparkling water only. <laughs> Sparkling water only. <laughs> yes, Ricky. Um, so, but when you're like literally like enough, enough, how many more miles do we have left? What, what is it that, like you have to click in and mentally go to in order to push all the way. I, I just able to tell me, tell myself that I have a lot of people counting on me to finish this, but my son, I have to finish it for him. And then the people who I have with me, the crew that I have with me are all veterans as well. Mm. So I have chip street who we deployed together and we are brothers and he comes to all this stuff with me and 
watching how much pain and like he's in just physical pain mm. and still pushing every day with me in the truck. And then we have Larry Hinkle now with us who is now went through the boot campaigns program as well. So it'll be fun. John Miller, who's a veteran as well. So it's just having this group of veterans now that have been inspired to be on the trip with me. Mm -hmm. I keep pushing so that we can get more of them. And so when you're along the route, because your first route, tell everybody you went from New York. Yeah, I went from New so York. So the first the first road trip, which was really, how many miles was that? 1,200? 1,551. No, let's not forget the extra one. No. 1,550 one. one miles. You went from New York to where in Florida? To Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Yeah, Pinellas Park. Okay, all on his bike. Mm -hmm. So when you're along that route, were people honking at you? Were people screaming out the window? You know, what was it? What was, was it was crazy because obviously we look weird, right? We yeah, this like big, what's this guy doing? Big van that was branded, and then me behind it, and everyone's like, "What is this guy laying down doing?" Like you know, because a hand bike. Not a lot of people know what they are. Right. So I'm laid down behind this van and we would pull into a gas station or something and uh, people would come up and actually talk to us and just want to know. And then like we, they would give us money or donate. And one guy stopped us in North Carolina at, in the middle of the country, just randomly pulled us over. Like he went by us and then did a U-turn and was waiting for us. Oh. And he ended up giving us yeah, money because he really wanted to. We got pulled over a couple of times by the cops. <laughs> and? One time, the cop was really cool. We went through Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> like, oh, cool. Yeah. I don't know, people called him. <laughs> so we, he was waiting for us when we got out of there. He was really cool. He ended up just taking pictures with us. Okay. And no tickets. No tickets. You weren't going that fast? No. No. Not. You wish. No, yeah. You could do it in less days. Yeah. I did. Well, last year, 1,551 was done in 13 days. That's insane. So we actually done it in one less day than this year. And it is an unofficial world record. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So that How was, do we make it an official world record? We, we get don't. the boot campaign on that? No. No. We don't make it. We, we leave don't. it alone because the mission is more important than that. Okay. So, I love that. But we did get pulled over one other time and that cop did not like us. He was huh. very angry. Maybe he had just had a bad morning with his wife. You know, I, you know we all have a moment, right? Yeah. Hopefully that was his. So what did you learn from the last road trip that you hope to put into play this time that you you think it's going to make you more mentally strong, physically strong, emotionally ready. What? What's Don't different? do it again. Don't do it again. <laughs> but yet here we are. But here we are. So yep. it's Saturday. So Saturday is from the Frontier Flight Museum, mm -hmm. right? So yep. you will be there with all the people and veterans and the send off. And what time is that? That's at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So mm -hmm. Shelly, can anybody come to that? Anybody okay. Come? So anybody can come Frontier Flights Museum, which is obviously just right next to Love Field. So you'll be there, mm -hmm. and then at 10 a.m. you start the... No, so it is, we don't leave there until 11.30. We are leaving there about 11.15, so what? the Frontier the Flight Museum is unveiling a new plane. Oh, Frontier yeah. Flight is unveiling a new mm -hmm. plane. Yeah. It's the plane and then you. Yeah. You wish you were flying. I know, that would have been a lot That would have been a lot faster and a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you're going to take off at about 11.15. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell you, so, you know, my, my middle child Hawkins is super, super duper uber into the military. Like he has a Lockheed Martin backpack with <laughs> patches. And anytime I say military is military. And we were in the airport the other day and it made me think of you because he, um, unbeknownst to us, there were some military guys just, we were waiting for our baggage, which, you know, never came, but that's another story. He went over to them and shook their hands and thanked them for their service. And he came back and then the guys came back and gave him like a pin. Oh, that's awesome. And I like started crying in the airport. <laughs> and I was just the fact that Hawkins knew to do that. And I know it means more when like a kid says thank you because you it really means it. You know, people, oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. But what can somebody do that's watching this besides donating to the boot campaign and rooting you on? What little thing can somebody do to, to help you and all the veterans around you know that we actually do care? You know, it is, that's a tough one because it's like, we get a lot of it, mm -hmm. you know, because we're one of the few countries where there, it is good to be in the military and the civilians and society, they do welcome us back now. So it's just keep showing your support, keep telling that person, thank you, because you have no clue what that veteran's going through. Mm -hmm. Just show them a smile and say, thank you, because 
even though that you may think, okay, they think it's ingenuine, but just smile and tell them thank you because you don't know what that person is going through. You don't know what that day is like for them. And that could be one of the things that keeps them going mm -hmm. one more day. And maybe read a book about the military with your kids. Talk yeah, about tell, freedom. Yeah, Talk, about Talk about bravery. Talk about courage. Means. Yeah. And you've had, is it nine friends yes. that have committed suicide mm -hmm. that you actually served with yeah. so, in Iraq? Yeah, that's a that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, because yeah. you don't you think that hey, you know what could I've done mm -hmm. to been there for them? What what more can I do to get this message out? And mm -hmm. how can I share their pain and let them know I want to help them? Mm -hmm. And so this is why I do the Rayleigh road trip, and I got you know people with me and people I know that just I keep pushing them and hopefully by me doing this and being in front of the camera, which I really hate. And you hate this, but you're with I, me. I know. No, I hate being in front of the camera. Oh yeah. Cause I hate speaking. You're doing great. It, we want a bunch of hearts. Is he doing great? Let's show Ricky some love. Press the heart button. It takes like 30 seconds for a delay and then Shelly can come over here and show us all the hearts you hopefully get. But it's, yeah, it's that I hate it, but I know if I'm not doing it, who is, who is. So I right. have to be the one to get the message out there. And I hate being here, but as much as I hate it, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it because hopefully I can get that one other person help. Have you had a stranger email? Have you had a stranger call, write, email into boot campaign and say, I saw, you know, this Ricky Rayleigh guy doing X, Y, and Z. Can I learn more? Has that happened? I've had one from last trip that said that, you know, I was, the reason why they're seeking help now. So that made it all worth it. Every mile, every bit of suffering I went through that last trip was worth it. So I'm hoping to get at least one more. Mm -hmm. So if I get one more out of every trip, that's all I can ask for. I agree. How are you training for this? Well, this year- You've got was... some big muscles, you're <laughs> super strong. So this year is a lot different than last year. When we were FaceTiming, I was always on the road. So last year I was always six to eight hours a day riding my bike. Yeah. This year I've done it with the coach and uh, he's a, uh, it's all indoors because Indiana is cold. Mm. So it's all been on the trainer and mentally that's hard for me because I'm like, am I ready? And, and yeah, when you don't see yourself actually moving down the road, yeah. you're just sitting there and you're still sitting there and wait, now I'm still sitting here. Yeah, it's like all that. on a computer. So my trainer on a reacts. Computer. Yeah, my trainer will give me heel resistance, take it away, add wind resistance, and then he can look at my power. Wait, we can do this inside now, add wind resistance. And oh then, yeah. Huh. Yeah. If you want to spend enough money to have a fan that will, <laughs> that will blow in your face when the wind kicks in. Okay. Okay. So yeah, all that's done and I've done all the training. It's just mentally, I'm like, man, I haven't been on the road enough, mm. you know? So that part's getting to me and today's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is what it is. Cause on Saturday you take off. Are you eating like 150 grams of protein a day and all this kind of stuff too? No. Oh I man. Eat, I eat like once a day. You eat once a day. I'm getting ready for the real, the realism of the ride so that I'm not, because when you do all those, I can't eat the food and my stomach doesn't work like that on a bike. So, so are you hangry? Mm -mm. Hmm. No, I'm I would good. be super awful and hangry if I, well, didn't that's eat. why you eat fats, right? Stay yeah. away from the sugar and the carbs and keep it more keto so that then you don't have those hunger pains from, mm -hmm. cause your body's eating the fat. Hmm. So what is something that you put into play every day in your life now that maybe we could make applicable to somebody who is sitting in their house, who is thinking, I want to step out. I'm not going to step out. I want to step out. No, I'm not going to do it. No, yeah, no, no, I'm doing it. No, I'm going to wait. What could you tell a veteran or honestly just somebody who's isolating themselves and just not loving life? What is something that you've learned through going through the health and wellness program with boot campaign? that they could try that has helped you? Even if it's a mindfulness thing, if it's writing things down, like what has worked for you? And we realize it won't work for everybody, but what has helped you that uh, we can learning, share with others? Learning to be, to be okay with the uncomfortable hmm. because that's really what you need to do is we stay in our little comfortable zones, everyone does. And then we kind of start getting really relaxed and get complacent mm -hmm. and then we get in this funk 
because we're so comfortable and not willing to get out of it. We're afraid of being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So be uncomfortable. Even if that means like for me, it was accepting help for someone. So I'll be in my car mm -hmm. and I'll be getting out of my car at the grocery store and someone's like, Oh, can I help you? And I'm like, no, I'm doing this. Like this is the 17th time today. Someone's came up and asked, but it's saying, yeah. Okay. Please. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you for wanting help. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, thank you. There's my chair, you know, or mm -hmm. something like that, because it was a quote that uh, the therapist gave me when I went through the program, and it was, uh, the perfume of the rose stays on the giver's hand. So you're they're getting something as well. Okay, they're say not, that slower and again. The perfume, perfume of, of the rose, rose stays, stays on, on the, the giver's, giver's hand. hand. I've never heard that. Yeah. That's so, a great quote. Yeah, it just it stuck with me. Huh. And... I'm also helping them by letting them help me. Absolutely. And then that's what allowed me to be uncomfortable by accepting help. Do you do you like it when people ask you your story? Do you think veterans want to talk more? I think that's the hard thing as a civilian. It's like, hey, what do I say now? Mm -hmm. uh, hey, um, so how's that? Like you don't really even know what to say. Yeah. Do you think most veterans are willing and wanting? Do they want to talk about? Do they want people to ask questions? You know what I'm saying? You'll find out that most veterans want to talk. They do want to talk, don't they? Because they have that need to talk, to tell what's going on in them. Mm -hmm. So if you can be that, that person who's just willing to listen and be actively listening, and they'll talk to you. They'll open up. Okay. Let's do some fast facts. I don't even know what the questions are going to be, so this might not be as fast as I want it <laughs> to be. Um, okay, tell us two things that you went that you got to do through the health and wellness program. For example, super tangible items. I was with a health specialist for six weeks who taught me how to eat whatever you just talked about, that high fat hmm. thing. What 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 what, for example, are two tangible things that you learned and did? That I learned and did. Or that you did. For example, I did brain imaging. So what? we did uh so one of them was I did transcranial direct stimulation. So it's uh just direct current stimulation. So CECS, so where they're stimulating your brain. And part of that was to stimulate your brain to increase the blood flow in the prefrontal cortex to allow you to accept more of the psychotherapy that happens right after it. Huh. So because your brain, your prefrontal cortex is like your processor. So it takes in all the information, processes it, and then tells your brain what you should do with it. Well, if you go into a therapy session, I'm not going to want to tell you everything about me, I'm going to want to shut down. So your brain will actually protect itself and shut down and your prefrontal cortex won't process all the information that's going on. And the transcranial direct stimulation, it uh, helps you uh, keep the blood here hmm. and allows you to accept the information that's happening. So then you can start to break down some of those neural pathways that you have developed developed over the years that has led you to defend yourself the way you do. Because mm -hmm. when you have PTSD, I've learned this through some brain stuff, when you have PTSD, the, the way that you your memory is stored is different than just your memories. Because when it's tragic and highly emotional, it's ingrained differently in your yeah. brain and therefore harder to rewire. Yeah, because right? your brain wants to protect itself. Right. So you want to live, mm -hmm. right? So it takes any, like if you touch a hot pan, you touch it once, you're never going to go up to that pan and say, oh, without saying, oh, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to test it first. So it takes 16 times to rewire your brain. To, to not touch the pan. Yeah. So, well, so a negative. So it takes one negative to make it a permanent. Mm. And then it takes 16 good to, to change undo it. it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's where all this therapy and all the work is hard because so it's every day you have to tell yourself, it's prob what's probable and what's uh, possible. Because hmm. anything's possible, but not everything's probable. Not every day, yeah. So it's not like I'm gonna drive down the road and this piece of trash is an IED. It's possible as an IED, but because we're in the United States and we're where I'm at, it's not probable as an IED. So I can drive past it. Did you think that a lot, that piece of trash is an IED? Yeah, so in that, especially at first, when yeah. you get first get home and you get used to it and you realize how much trash and everything's around you because you have to process all this information while you're driving over there that 
that piece of trash could be an IED. That person walking out of their house could be a, you know, a terrorist, that car driving down the road, what are mm -hmm. they doing? So you're, you're processing all this information and it takes a lot for you to change that when you get home. And so by after a while, you learn to be able to block some of that out. But it wasn't until I came through the boot campaigns, health and wellness program that I really understood how to block it out successfully and recreate these pathways. And how long did that take you to get there? Well, it's been 10 years. It'll be, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's a day to day thing. It's, it's, work. it's a day to day. So, day yeah. Work. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not out of the darkness yet, but I have light. No. So, and that's what getting to know where depression and all this traumatic events in your life, you're not going to lose those, but you have to learn to accept them and live with them. And find the character through them to build yourself to move forward, which sounds really, I mean, that's really difficult. It is. So what one word would you use to describe yourself before you were part of the boot campaign? Lost. What one word would you describe now? Home. You said the happiest moment with your son. Will your son be on the on the trail at any point where you get to see him at the at end? The just end. at the at end. The end. Just yeah. at the end. Because he's still at school. Because he's still in school. So we FaceTime every morning, every night. Yeah. Yeah. What do you listen? Are you listening to the radio? Is there a song that you get jazzed to? I do a lot of audiobooks. A lot of audiobooks. What are you listening to? Uh, Give us three good book recommendations. Well, one is Fearless. The story of Adam Brown is one that I listen to. I love because that, that story is he's a uh, dev group guy, team six guy. And his story was is showing that accepting your weakness is actually your greatest strength. Mm -hmm. That the, you know, the strong, the weakest link in the chain doesn't break it, but the strong ones pulling apart breaks the weakest Ooh. link. So it's that kind of story and it lets you really know to be vulnerable because that's hard for a lot of guys and actually for a lot of women. I everyone, think it's hard for everybody. It's that vulnerability we're afraid of, but being able to be vulnerable so can powerful. be your, yeah, can mm -hmm. be your greatest strength. Mm -hmm. You're and, doing it right now. Yeah. I don't like it, but <laughs> okay. So give me one more book. That's interesting. I didn't know you were listening to books. I figured you were listening like, wild, wild, wild. Like, I don't know. I just feel like yeah. you might rock it out, but no, I mean, that's what's in on my Pandora. Right okay. Now, so but, I was right about that. Yeah. Okay. But no, so I do another book. We'll get rid of all the psychology ones. Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, well, uh, what's his name now? My brain went blank. No, it's because I'm putting you on the spot, so that's not cool. Yeah, no, it's, I got you, though. It's Zig Ziglar. I love Zig. Oh. Yeah, I love Zig. Okay. He's awesome. He does have a lot of really good one-liners. And, uh, yeah, his stories are fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I listen to a lot of Zig. Mm -hmm. um, and does your beard get, like, ten times thicker on this thing? Because it's oh, looking pretty thick right now. It's, yeah, no, so I mean, that rough. thing's, like, four inches wide. I know, it's massive, right? It is massive. I make my own beard stuff. You make your own beard stuff? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I uh, do your beeswax, gel? yeah, all the beeswax, uh, shea butter, coconut oil, essential oils. I'll you do? Oh, yeah. You have a soft side to you, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love yeah, it. You got to. Uh, okay, if somebody's sitting there listening to this and they're, they're even remotely, remotely thinking, hmm, this is interesting, I'm gonna share this with a buddy. What do you do as step two if you're not ready for step three to be Hi, I need help. What's step, what's baby step two? Baby step two. Yeah. To be ready. I don't know, you gotta, you gotta look at your life and say, can it, how can I make it better? Because I don't, you gotta be ready for help, but you gotta hit that point to where you're really not happy with your life before you're willing to get that help. Because if not, you're always going to say, well, someone else is worse than me, mm -hmm. right? Someone, someone needs it more than I do, mm -hmm. but that's not true. You need to get help. You need to take care of yourself because you consume everyone around you. Mm -hmm. So your pain, everyone's feeling. Everyone, your neighborhood, your office, your wife, your kids, your kids' friends, it affects everything. Yeah, yeah. it really does. And yeah. you don't realize how much people see it. Mm -hmm. But you need to look at your life and say, where am I? 
can I be happier? Mm -hmm. And what about the significant others or people who love somebody who they think is hurting? You know, what should mm -hmm. they do? Because I, I can imagine, and I'm not married to a veteran, but if, if my husband was really suffering, I want to be like, hey, I need help, but he might not want that yet. And then becomes even a bigger issue. So what, what do you do if you are the caretaker, the person who loves somebody who you're questioning? You know, it is. So one thing I learned was communication. It, it needs to be open. And that's with me and my wife and me and my son. It's one thing I've really tried to adhere to was even though you may think you know what the answer to the question you're going to ask your significant other, because we all mind read with them, right? So when they text us, they may text us one line, but we know exactly how they said it, right. what they mean by it, and then we respond to it. Accordingly, the way, the way you think it should have been received. But really, right. we don't know. Hmm. We don't know what they're doing. So it's, I may assume you're going through something, but have I ever asked you? Okay, so have there I it ever is. Said, ask, yeah, so start start the conversation. Start the conversation. Be open and be willing to have the conversation. And significant others, and a lot of times it's, uh, with veterans, we're afraid that you're not going to want to hear our stories or we're going to scare you off with our stories. And so you need to let them know how much of it you can handle if you're the spouse. Oh. Let them know how much and say, I understand that you need to tell this to someone, but I personally am not able to be part of that story because... I can only take me. so yeah. much right now and tell me more. So, more. but I want to help you get someone to listen to you mm -hmm. and I will be there with you going to these appointments to get you the help. So it's just start the conversation. Okay. I like that a lot. That's actually very helpful. And then with boot campaign, did you pay a gazillion dollars for all of this? No, no, the boot campaigns paid for it all and all of it, all of it. There aren't deductibles. You're not getting $20 yin and yangs for random things. No. And and that's upcharge this and that. Yeah, that's the expensive part. So you could go out and get this help by yourself without the boot campaign, but you're going to have to go and source every single step of it. And that's what the boot campaign is doing is it's got them all together. It's got this pipeline and they're like, Hey, you come here, we'll get you the help. Thank we'll you. send you to the pipelines. We already have it all connected. Mm -hmm. So, and the expert to tell you yeah. that you need this part of the pipeline and not this, you need this piece first, otherwise this piece doesn't work. Yeah. Right. So to make it efficient, smart and free. Yeah. Right. So with the Ricky, uh, road, Ricky Rayleigh road trip, is there a certain fiscal dollar that you're trying to raise or are we just hoping people give even in the amount of 20 bucks at a time? Yeah. I, I just want to raise any dollar amount I possibly can. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the more, the marriage, right. like raise the money, but the awareness for me it's is the key. It's the key because I do believe with awareness comes money. Mm -hmm. And I think that the more people we can get aware that there are people like the boot campaign out here willing to facilitate this type of care, then we can get more people through it and more people donate to it to be aware and how much it can help everyone. So can they buy those cute shoes that you're wearing on? Can they? Yeah. They okay. Just okay. So will you can we see the cute shoes? So here's a yeah, Shelly can hear real fast. So Shelly's the CEO of the group campaign. She's <laughs> sitting Shelly and Shelly. This is a Shelly. So you have to like actually lift your foot up though. So if you're looking for a fun way to give, here I'll hold it. Let's do cheese compost. Um so they go to bootcampaign.com. Bootcampaign.org. Bootcampaign.org, Kate. So these are yeah. tell them. It's our 10 year anniversary this year. We're celebrating 10 years of serving veterans. And so these are so cool. a limited edition Altima boot that are branded red, white, and blue. So they're so much fun. Let's, let's and then I have, I have these ones, which is also super fun. A little, a little larger, a little more large, but I've worn them with, yeah. I have three boys. I mean, I'm, I'm actually feel like some days that I am in Iraq with them. <laughs> Laser gun. <laughs> Children knocking things over. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so bootcampaign.org, you can also just give 20 bucks or, you know what, honestly, if you want to just share boot campaign right now, even just the website, maybe just your network could get somebody to tell somebody who needs to tell somebody. Do you want to come stay here for 10 seconds? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you don't need to stand up. Yeah. I would scoot over. What, what? <laughs> I mean, Good, I, I get I, to I, get I, closer I, to Ricky. 
Okay, what else, what else do we need to say? I feel like you have a purpose in this. I have to say that a lot of people do their job so they can make money, so they can go home, so they can get on vacation, so they can retire as soon as they can. Like, this is what people do. Yeah. And I feel like you have found your purpose. Yeah, I mean, I, that, wow, Shelly, this is like an intense therapy session. Um, <laughs> I feel like, you know, for us, the Department of Defense just released some stats that most Americans don't know much about the military or what it means to serve. And so that's our purpose is to ignite the inner patriot and make sure that people are aware that there's active duty troops all over the world serving, yes, in the conflicts that make um, headlines in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also in a hundred other countries as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need to give back to them when they come home. And when you, what is it? I mean, is is Ricky the one shining star, or are there a lot of Rickies out there that are coming around the corner? Do you there know what I mean? Better Rickies out there. <laughs> there are better there Rickies. Are better yeah, Rickies. you were just the B team. You just yeah. got invited today because I, I think know. you're kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. See, so yeah. that's how it works out. Well, it's funny you say that because Ricky, when I first met him, I thought there's no way he would sign up to go through the program. And huh. there's she, she I didn't me I know that. One of the lowest points I read before yeah. I did the program. So she didn't think you'd do it. I didn't think he'd do it. I didn't think he'd stick with it. Um, and I didn't think he'd have as positive an outcome just because he was in such a deep hole. But he's yeah. it's remarkable. See yeah, what I happens. Yeah. I know, give a give a weed a little bit of water, it turns into a flower. <laughs> that creates perfume that gives right. to other people. Exactly. <laughs> let's take it all take a full circle here if you haven't been listening the whole time. Okay, so let's recap that so Saturday morning. 10 a.m., Frontiers of Flight mm -hmm. Museum. Anybody can come. If you want your kids to see the new plane that's out there, that starts at 10. Ricky, you're taking off at 11.15. Mm -hmm. I do think that is a way to get your boots on. Yeah. Just yeah. a small way to be like, hey, look. Look what this man is doing for his friends. He knows the pain they're in, and this is about education. Yeah. So if you're like, well, I don't have the ability to do X, Y, or Z, well, maybe show up and shake his hand and say hello, yeah. right? Yeah. Step one. We'll yeah. Love it. yeah. And then will we be able to follow the journey? How do we follow the journey? Yes, go to RaylieRoadTrip.org and you can see every stop. He's going to make several stops along the way and mm -hmm. finish at the Navy SEAL Museum in Fort Pierce, Florida. Yeah, should okay. be fun. Okay, well, good luck. We're excited for you. Yeah, thank you. We're proud of you. There was one amazing. question. Of oh, that. yeah, what was the question? What's the motto you live by? Ooh, what's the motto you live by? It's going to be a good answer. You don't want to know the real one. So we'll, go, <laughs> we'll go to the appropriate it's one. Uh, you know, the motto I live by is live every day. Mm -hmm. Just be be there, be present, live every day. Because tomorrow's different. Yesterday happened. So live today. Be here because tomorrow's not promised. Trust me. I'm mm -hmm. one person who can tell you. You don't know what tomorrow's because if 10 years ago, so I'll be paralyzed in six days for 10 years. So it'll be my 10 year anniversary in six days. There's never in 10 years ago, I would have never thought I would be here mm -hmm. in a chair. And that happened in a split second. So that day I woke up, I did not think, oh, at the end of this day, I'm not going to be able to walk. Mm -hmm. But that next day I woke up after I was paralyzed, and I was like, that's fine. Let's just move on to the next day. It's okay. Can't cry over spilt milk, so what's tomorrow going to hold? So it's be present, live every day. Well, I, I can't say anything else to that. Okay, Ricky, really, road trip. I mean, <laughs> triple R's. Uh, so wait, what is it? Ricky Rayleigh Road, Rayleigh road Trip. Rayleigh, Rayleigh road, road Trip. Okay, good. You took out one of the R's. Rayleigh Road well, Trip. That's how I was thinking too. Whenever Ricky Rayleigh Road Trip. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't say my R's when I was a kid. Well, I still can't do it, and I was a news anchor for a long <laughs> time. I would always say the Red River Rivalry, the Red River Rivalry. <laughs> it's finally like it's called Texas OU, and then people would be like, "No, it's OU Texas." I'm like, "Enough, <laughs> yeah, too enough, much. enough." Okay, go put your boots on. We have, there's something small you can do, and today is the day that you should do it and live every day out. Thank yes. you so much. Thank, thank you for what you do, right. and thank, thank you. you for being here. I love seeing you. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye, guys. Great. Dude, you've gotten good.